Peace and blessings, peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger, we're back in our video. This one's about seven signs God is preparing you for something better. And let me tell you guys, this is something that I wish I watched like five years ago because everything I'm going everything I'm gonna go over in this in this video is the things that I experienced and I could tell you guys, wow, I wish I saw this video. It would increase my faith, it would increase my hope, and it would just motivate me, man. This one's gonna be all about motivation. So uh, the number one sign you will see when God is pushing you for something better is you will experience successive failures. And what does that mean, successive failures? So let's say you're doing something, right? Uh, let's say you got a business. Like for me, I used to run um, an app and that, the app had thousands of people. Now it was linked to weed. So, you know, when I decided to pick up my cross, I can't be promoting that type of stuff, right? And this app would have over had over 100,000 downloads on Android and uh, an iPhone. It was really successful. But it's like I can never make it to the next level. It was always something like like a roadblock. There was always something that I just I just could just kept me stagnated. And no matter how much people would promote it, I had a bunch of people, I had rappers hit me up, all this type of stuff. It was successful. A lot of people like to use it, use it every day. But for whatever reason, it just never could get to the next level. And there's many other things that I did in life where it would be successful, but I could I never it was like a failure at the end of the day, right? And the reason why behind that, guys, is because God has something better for you. That's not God's, God's purpose. My life, my purpose was not to have a day nap so everyone could just get high to you. That's not what God's purpose was, was in my life. My purpose was to preach the word and help people through Jesus Christ. That's what my purpose was. That's why when I got on YouTube, my first video that I made was zero subscribers. Got like 20,000 views within the first week. You know how hard it is to get your first, I didn't know anything about YouTube. I literally was going through like a lot of spiritual warfare at the time and um, I didn't have no one to talk to because everyone was like, oh, Mark, you're crazy. What's wrong with you? So I got on YouTube and I was just sharing people like me being a target individual going through gang stalking, pretty much like spiritual warfare. And all of a sudden I had like a thousand people in the comment section like, wow, I can relate to what you're going through, blah, blah, all that type of stuff. And I just started making more videos. Like the videos just, just keep going up because that's God's calling in my life. And it, it just came natural. It was easy. You know, just like that one song, it reminded me, uh, I could do this thing with no effort. What's that, what, what one big black dude? Like, that's how, that's how it feels. Like, when it's God's purpose in your life, and that's what God wants you to do, it's going to come easy, it's going to come natural with no effort. Woo! It's, it's going to come with no effort. So, one thing you will see when God has something better for you in your life, guys, you're going to go through a lot of successes, failures, whether it's at your school, whether it's at your... Um, your business, uh, your job, uh, like your dreams, your goals, your ambitions, all that type of stuff. If you have successive failures, I'm telling you, God has something better for you. And it's linked to God's kingdom. It's linked to his will, his purpose in your life. Okay. Number two, the number two sign is, the sign number two is that you will deal with many rejections. And I always tell you guys, you got to always like instill this in your brain. Per, uh, rejection is just God's protection. Whether it's a new job or even like um, a relationship or a friendship. You're wondering why, uh, especially for you sisters, like you're wondering why you just can't get a husband. You know, you say, now oh, I'm cute, I'm cute, you know, and, and you might be cute, right? But that man or that woman is just not meant to be where God's taking, where God's taking you. You have a high call in your life and you, you not everyone can have access to you, okay? You chosen ones, the small few of you guys, the people who are willing to walk, walk this narrow path. You're gonna accept, you have to you have to embrace the rejections, okay? Because like I said, you have a high calling in life and not everyone's going where you're going. So you gotta expect the rejections. You're gonna deal with many of that. Okay, and always understand that God has something better for you. So when you get rejected, people won't be around you no more. People don't see your your potential, people don't see what you what you bring to the table, you know, people don't see it. That's okay. It's God has something better for you. I'm telling you guys, this is something that I learned throughout this walk. That's like one of the earliest things I learned. God uh rejection is God's protection. Number three is that you will know God wants you to get rid of something. You'll get constant reminders, okay? So like I always tell you guys, to get to the next level in life, there's always going to be a new devil. And that thing that you put away, uh, whatever sin, whatever burden, whatever, anything it is, okay? and we all know, we all have a conscience. Uh, now, not everyone has the Holy Spirit, but everyone knows between right and wrong, okay? Every, uh, not everyone, the people who are defiled don't know between good and evil, but those who are not defiled, we know between good and evil and right or wrong, okay? And God will constantly remind you, okay, all you chose ones, right? Anything that you're doing that's wrong, um, you know, that's that's separating you from God, whatever sin it is, or anything that you're struggling with, God will give you constant reminders to, you have to get rid of something. And see, when God wants you to get rid of something, because he's preparing you for something better, something greater, Okay, when I gave up that my worldly lifestyle, God has something greater for me now to preach the word. Now I have over half a million people watching me, guys. I think a half a million subscribers. So I had to give up the 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 vanity. I had to give up all that to get something greater. Even the Bible says 
in Matthew chapter 16, 24 to 25. I'll leave a verse on the side because I don't want to say that wrong. Uh, but it says that he who loses his life will find it. And he who tries to save his life will lose it. I'm living proof of that scripture, man. So anyone's in denial of the Bible and God, I'm living proof, okay? Whoever tries to save their life, they will lose it. So when God's calling you, you got to give up everything, anything, everything. Okay, anything that, anything that God's telling you you have to let go, you have to let go. And see, that separates the chosen ones. Remember, because the Bible says many are called, but only few are chosen. That separates those who are just called and then those who are actually chosen, those who are walking in purpose or God-given purpose. Okay, so that's number, number, that's number three. Number four is you are no longer passionate, okay? You are no longer passionate for like the thing when I had my app, when I had over 100,000 downloads. I think after like a year or after like two years, I just wasn't passionate about it no more. Even though I had thousands of people using it daily, I just wasn't passionate for no more. And that's what God had something better for me. And a year later, that's when I started making YouTube. Or was it, was it a year later? It was about, no, actually like five months later, you know, the next season, okay? God has something better for me, but now I had to go through it. It was a testing in my faith. I got my faith was tested like crazy, man. When God has something better for you, your faith is going to get tested. Are you going to trust God or are you going to trust in yourself? Are you going to rely on a family member or friend, even though God's really telling you what you, what you have to do? Are you going to rely on your friend, your family? Because you got to understand the devil is using people. Okay, so are you going to rely on, listen to the devil? Okay, or are you going to listen to God, the Holy Spirit? Okay, so always keep that in mind. You're going to find yourself no longer passionate. And I, I always ask, I always tell you guys, when you're, when you're, when you find yourself confused, anxious, uh, where you don't know what to do, don't, don't know where to go, et cetera, et cetera, you got to pray and ask God for wisdom. Okay, wisdom, 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 man. If it wasn't for wisdom, guys, I wouldn't be even making this video. None of you guys will know who I am. Okay, so wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. The Bible even says if any if any of you guys lack wisdom, ask God and he'll give it to you freely. Okay, so always make sure that you're praying and asking God for wisdom, especially when you want something better in life, okay? But you got to be willing to sacrifice, okay? you got That's what all about being a disciple of Christ is sacrifice, being willing to let go. Okay, number five is you will see new doors opening. And this is God giving you hope. Okay, this is God, you, you, you getting tested, your faith tested and you never folded. Okay, you're gonna start to see that God starts opening new, new doors, new blessings, new opportunities. And I'm telling you, you'll see it coming. And once you open that door, okay, once you see it, and once you, you once you fully, you know, gave up anything that you were struggling with or maybe uh, the wrong friendship, because even friends could be your downfall or even family members or, Maybe y'all sleeping with the enemy. You're sleeping with someone who ain't living right. Uh, you know, you got that soul tie that you got to break free from. Okay, we all have dealt with that before. Okay, so you're going to see yourself having new doors opening. But best believe, guys, when those new doors open, don't go back. Don't look back. Okay, don't do that. Okay, yes, we're going to fall short. We're going to struggle. But, you know, don't make no excuses. Okay, you got to be on fire for God. You have a purpose, bro. Or sis, you have a purpose. So walk in your God-given purpose. So, okay. You, you will see new doors coming, okay? New blessings to your obedience. So God sees that you're working through, you're, work, you're applying your work with faith, because with faith, faith without works is dead. So you're, you're getting tested through your faith and you're applying through works. So how is that? How, you know, what does works when you're getting tested through your faith? Oh, you're praying more. You're seeking out God more. You're reading your Bible. Uh, you're applying action. You're applying action in life. So whatever thing that you want to change, you're, you're, you're striving to be obedient. Okay, number six is God puts you in a position where you have no choice. Oh, I went through this so much. Number six is God puts you in a position where you have no choice. Where pretty much is either God's way or there's no other way. That's what God literally put me in. I was in the mental hospital. Um, I lost everything. Went to jail. I mean, guys, I went through it all. <laughs> I went through hell on earth, man. At least, at least that's what it felt like. And he put me in a position where I had no other choice but to trust in him. I had no other choice but to talk to him and, and seek out him. When, when he cleared out all the distractions, it was now it was just me and God, me and the angels. Okay, so always keep that in mind. So God will do that. He will put you in uncomfortable positions, uncomfortable situations, just so you know. Okay, I got to go to Him. There's no one else. I'm not going to my friend no more. Okay, I'm not going to my mom, my dad, uh, my boyfriend, my girlfriend, my wife, my husband. You know, now if you if y'all in the marriage, we all know what the Bible says. You know, uh, it's obedience. So if your husband's saying something. You listen to it, but sometimes we're in, we're in the wrong marriage because the Bible says that you're not supposed to be unequally yoked. Okay, so a lot of, a lot of times people get in that unequally yoked marriage, and you see what happens. Okay, so always keep that in mind. You're gonna be in a, a position, a situation where you gotta trust nobody but God, man. Even look, look what happened to uh, Job. Okay, um, when Job's wife said, you know, curse God. 
He could have trusted in his wife and say, all right, that's, you're my wife, uh, you know, one flesh, right? Nah, he put his trust in God, man. Job was in a situation, an uncomfortable situation. Okay, y'all know what all what he went through. But in the midst of it all, he he all he put his trust more in God. It's like the, even though all those devil, the, the attacks of the enemy, everything he went through, he just got closer to God. That's what you got to be doing too as well. Okay, number seven is you will notice you experience what people in the Bible went through. Ooh, I know it might be kind of hard for you guys to see because it's kind of long to say, but it says you will notice you experience what people in the Bible went through. Yes. Man, there's a season where I went through a season of Job, a season of Joseph, um, a season of Jesus. Okay, now I didn't get crucified on, on the tree and hanged or anything like that, but I had to go through that Judas. I had to go through that snake. That one that's telling me, oh, I love you, Mark. I'm riding for you, my dog. This and that, blah, blah, blah. Nah, man. <laughs> These are some Judas is out here. Y'all got to have discernment, okay? And see, sometimes God allows that. I mean, just like God allowed Judas to be with Jesus and be part of the 12 disciples, it's all part of God's plan. And understand that if, if it wasn't for Judas, the Jesus, if it wasn't for Judas snitching on that, who who knows what would have happened? Okay, so it's all part of God's plan. And there's times where I went like like Samson when that evil woman came along, the one who acted like she loved me, acted like she was down for me, and she wanted to cut cut off my dress. Where's the where's the scissors at? Hold up, hold up, where's the scissors at? Hold up, right here you go. She wanted she wanted to cut off my dreadlocks, man. She wanted to cut it off. And you know, <laughs> man, I, I, <laughs> but yeah, man, there's gonna be times like that where you feel like, Dad, I feel like Samson, I feel like Joseph, I feel like David, I feel like Samuel, you know, I feel like all you gonna have those times, man. And just know through it all, if you put your trust in God, put your faith in God, all things, all things work together for those who love God and are called according to his purpose, man. So these are seven signs. God is pushing for something better, man. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already made this far, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. And if you guys wish to support me, the links are down below in the description. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.